I'm going to show you how to use FileZilla. And this is going to be for sharing files between your computer and a server on FileZilla. It could be for a Minecraft server. It could be for a virtual machine. You could be transferring files between computers. Whatever your need may be, this video should be able to help you do what you need to do. So once you've downloaded and installed FileZilla and opened it up, this is the screen here you will see. Now the first thing we want to do is actually connect to the server that we want to move files to or from. We can do files back and forth. Now I have set up a um, template server, not on my main computer. And in ho you've got host, username, password and port up here. So Wherever you've set up your server with, if you've got a server host and you don't know how to get these, they should be able to help you. So the host is going to be your IP or the address of your server. So I'm going to put that in here. This is the IP that I'm going into. And then the username is going to be the actual user. Um, for me, this is tester. Depending on how your server is set up, it could be the username you've been given by your server hosting company. Or maybe if you're... Um, setting up a whole network. It could be the username that you have set up, maybe on Pterodactyl, etc., for um, your users. The password, again, would have been set up by you. You're going to put this in here. And then the port number, which is the server port that you're accessing. And then we're going to press Quick Connect. You may, or you may get this where it says Unknown Host Key. That means that it doesn't have um, security. Um, you can say, yeah, add uh, trust this host, OK. And now what you're hoping to see up here is connecting, connected to, um, you know, the IP you've put in, retrieving the directory, successful. What you can now see here in this right hand side is your server. So um, I could create a new directory in here and it could be called test. And then in here I could create another directory called test2. And what you can basically see here then is your your tree so this top bar this is your your tree your file tree you can see where we are so i can double click this and go back out to the root and then down here is basically um kind of similar it's like a file explorer where you can go into the different files but you can go back one whereas up here you can see the entire tree that you've gone into on the left hand side is your computer that you are accessing it from so i can scroll up here you can see i've got my desktop my documents my downloads etc Let's say that um, this is an old whitelist file from a Minecraft server I used to run. Let's say I want to move this whitelist file onto my server that I have connected to. All I have to do is drag the whitelist file over here. You get a pop-up, all files are transferred successfully. Now, let's say I wanted to put this into the folder test2. I could simply drag it into there. And if you access your files on a web page or somewhere else, you will actually be able to refresh and see these files in there. As soon as you've done this, they are now on your server. If files are bigger, they're obviously going to take longer. And you can see down here, if, you're, if you can move entire folders over if you want, you can do whatever you like. Now, down here, you can say it says queued files, failed transfers, and successful transfers. You can see where it has gone. Like, let's say I wanted to put all of these files. I want to copy them into this folder. I could just drag them into here. Uh, it's too quick. It's too quick. It literally took like a, a second. But basically, they queue up down here, and then you'll see all of them are successful. And it took a few seconds. If you do like big video files or, you know, huge files, it will it'll may take a, a lot longer. But you can you know, do multiple files, and this won't take them off your main computer. It'll just copy them onto the server. And I can go back and back again um, here. Up the top here, you've got a few buttons that are useful. You can toggle the display of the message log, which is this top bit. The next one is the local directory tree, which is the tree here. And you can see what we're using. Then you can see we have the remote directory tree, so the one over here. And we can also toggle the transfer queue at the bottom or not. So maybe you do or don't care about this. This button here is really useful. Refresh the files and the folders. So if you've gone into your file explorer and updated them, you will need to press refresh here. Let's say you want to um, stop or start the processing queue. You can do that here. You can see, look, I have disconnected from the server. So you may time out after a while. So do be careful of that. You can cancel the current operation. You can also disconnect from the current server. You can reconnect to the last used server automatically. 
You can open the directory listing filter dialog. Um, probably won't use this if you're watching this tutorial. And you can also toggle, toggle directory comparison, which is really useful, where basically if I click that, you can see, look, what files are actually in here. If I go into test two and press that, I can say, right, okay, these green ones are over here. These yellow ones, however, and this file, these aren't in this folder. So you can see what is in each folder here using this um, magnifying glass. And you can also toggle um, synchronized browsing where navigating the local directory will also change the directory on the server uh, and vice versa. And another thing you can do is also just use the binoculars to actually just search for a specific file. So if I type in here, uh, oh my God, YouTube, you can see here, this is the YouTube file that I transferred over, and that's all that we have. And you can use this to search for files. You can quick connect. You can also click this drop down. None of these are active anymore, um, but these are old servers I used to own. So you could also click the drop down and try and connect to um, other servers that you may have. And you'll see it is not an active server that I own anymore. And I can just press the X to cancel the current operation. And you can see the connection attempt were interrupted by me. Now, if you can't connect in here, then it's very likely you may have put in your host or username, etc. incorrectly, or maybe the server has been turned off um, at the root. But that basically is how you use FileZilla. That's how you're going to transfer files over. You know, if you're on, like I said, if you want to open Minecraft server files with FileZilla, they'll all be over here. Whether you're doing it for WordPress, you know, other games like Seven Days to Die, Ark, your website, could be anything that you are using SFTP for, um, and this is how you would use it. So that is the guide and tutorial on how to use the FileZilla program.